what's going on? Eric Cortina here, Texas Barn Aluminiums. So this morning was about 26 degrees, so it was pretty cold here in Texas. Uh, you can see in the background we we're doing some form setting for uh, for a foundation. So um, let me show you how we do that. This is the print for the slab that we will be forming. It is a 30 by 40 slab with tin lug all the way around for metal siding. That makes it a total 30 feet 3 inches by 40 feet 3 inches. There is also a ramp in the front that is 4 feet long and 12 feet 6 inches wide. The two most important things about a foundation is they need to be square and they need to be level. We check elevation to make sure the new slab is higher than existing driveway. This will prevent drainage issues. Our customer requested that the slab is square to the front fence, so we're pulling off measurements to make sure that we stay parallel to that fence. Once this line is established, this line cannot be moved or it will throw everything off. To help you keep track of it, we're going to call this side A. For side B, we pull off 40 feet 3 inches and install another string line parallel to side A. This gives us two perfectly parallel sides which are found in any structure with 90 degree corners. We drive a nail into the wood stake and bend the tip up. You can do fine adjustments by bending the nail the string line is attached to. If a coarser movement is needed, drive in another nail on the stake and move the string line. One thing to keep in mind is these lines are level and are showing where the top of the concrete will be. Now it's time to square up the foundation and to do that we need to break up the rectangle into two triangles. This is the formula we will use to square up the foundation. In our case, A equals 30 feet 3 inches and B equals 40 feet 3 inches and we need to solve for C. Let me show you how to do the math in any calculator. First we need to make sure the calculator memory is clear to ensure accurate results. We do that by pressing memory recall usually labeled MR. After that we press memory clear usually labeled MC. Now we're ready to do the math needed to get our diagonal dimension. We're going to do all of our math in feet. To convert inches to decimal, all you have to do is divide the inches by 12. The reason we divide by 12 is because there are 12 inches in one foot. In our case, it's 3 divided by 12, which gives us 0.25 feet. So let's do the first leg of the triangle, which is 40.25 feet. 40.25 times itself gives us 1620.0625. We add that to the memory by pressing M+. Now we do the same thing with the other leg of the triangle. 30.25 times itself is 915.0625. Notice that in order to multiply a number times itself, all you have to do is type in the number, followed by the times key, and then immediately followed by the equal sign, and you're done. Now press M plus to add this number to the memory as well. Make sure you only press M plus one time or it will keep adding the number to the memory. Now press MR or memory recall to bring up the total that we have stored in the memory. Our total is 2535.125 feet. Now press this button to get the square root of that number. The square root is 50.350024 and so on. Remember, this is still in feet. So we know the diagonal measurement is 50 feet, but the inches are in decimal. Let me show you how to convert the decimal to inches. But first, we need to isolate the decimal. So all we have to do at this point is subtract 50, and now we're left with the decimal point. After that, you take the decimal, multiply it times 12, and that gives you the inches. So now we know our diagonal measurement is 50 feet, 4.2002979 inches. Let me show you how to convert that decimal to sixteenths of an inch. So just like we did with the feet, we isolate the decimal. So to do that, we subtract 4, and we're left with the decimal. Now, if you want to convert it to 64 of an inch, you multiply times 64. If you want to go 30 seconds of an inch, you multiply times 32. Eighths of an inch, you multiply times eight, and so on and so forth. Here, I'm going to multiply times 16 to get sixteenths of an inch. So here we have 3.2 sixteenths of an inch. The point 0.2 is not enough to worry about at this point, so we're just going to call it 3 sixteenths. If you wanted it more precise, you would multiply times 64 or even 1 28th to get uh, even more precise. But for our purposes, sixteenths of an inch is good enough. All right, I know that was long-winded, but once you learn how to do this, you'll be able to uh, square up any foundation. This is the most precise way to do this. I'm going to condense everything into one screen so that if you have to come back to this video or if you want to save just one screenshot, 
you save this screen right here and then you'll be able to square up any foundation by simply looking at this screen and following the steps all right so this screen shows what we have right now we have those two blue lines which are parallel to fence a our customer has asked that we stay 16 feet away from fence b so now we measure 16 feet from the fence and make our first mark on the string line right here make sure you pull the tape measure very tight because any sag will affect the measurement now we measure 30 feet 3 inches alongside A and make our second mark. Now measure 50 feet 4 inches and 3 sixteenths on a diagonal over to side B and make a mark right here. We only use metal tape measures because they allow us to pull them really tight without stretching. As you can see he wrapped the tape measure around his leg to be able to free up the other hand so he can make the mark. It is extremely important that you do not touch the string line or it will affect the measurement. Now take another diagonal measurement and make your fourth mark. By now we should have four marks on the string lines. The way we verify that everything is correct is we measure between the third and the fourth mark. It should measure exactly 30 feet 3 inches. If it doesn't, go back and do it again because something is wrong. One thing to notice here is that while two guys were squaring up the foundation, the third guy was laying out all the forms for the foundation. This makes everything faster and more efficient. Okay, now that we have all of our four corners marked, and the uh, forms laid out, it's time to start forming. It is extremely important that you take your time making sure the foundation is square. If it's not square nor level, nothing else will matter. We're going to be using panel forms for this job, but it works the same way with just about any other form. Our panel forms are 8 feet long. Start the forms at one of the corner marks. Drive a 2x4 stake and add two braces. Do not nail the back stake at this point. The back stake will be nailed when we straighten out the form. Forms are nailed to each other at the joint. Vertical stake is nailed to both panels from the outside. Make sure to keep forms level and plumb. Put a brace on bottom, nail to stake, and the diagonal brace is nailed to the form and to the stake. Duplex nails work well for this purpose. However, the hardware store was out of uh, duplex and we're using coated sinkers. They work well in a pinch. Lay out two stakes per each panel. These stakes will be driven in at equal spacing once the forms are straightened out. To straighten out the forms, one guy will pull forms in and hold them as close as line as possible without touching the line. At this point, the other guy can nail the braces to the back stake. Make sure to use your sledgehammer as a backer when you're driving in the nails. If you don't, you're going to rattle the stake loose when you're driving in the nails. Now that side A and side B are completed, make sure they are still parallel to each other before you start on side C. To start on side C, drive a nail on each corner and pull a string line between side A and side B. Make a plumb line at the corner of the forms. This is going to be your guide to get started on side C. Once the form is lined up, go ahead and nail it from the back side into the other form. Form side C like you did side A and side B. Since our forms are 8 feet long, they add up to 40 feet even, which makes the forms 3 inches short. This is how we add the extra 3 inches needed. Make sure they are flush with the inside face of the forms. Go ahead and put the form in place and nail it from the outside of the forms. Drive in stakes and brace it like the rest of the forms. Okay, now we have completed three sides. Time to work on the front, which is where the ramp will be. Measure four feet, two and a half inches from the corner and put a mark on the string line. Now hold the foot on your tape measure and measure 13 feet, six inches and make another mark. This will mark the opening for the 12 feet, six inch wide ramp. Nail the two by six to the inside of the ramp form to give you a place to nail to the main form at 90 degrees. This will be the form for one side of the ramp. Install the form for the other side of the ramp and measure diagonally to make sure it's square. Use the same formula as we did for the main slab, except that now you will use 12 feet 6 inches for one leg and 4 feet for the other leg of the triangle. The diagonal measurement for the ramp is 13 feet 1 and a half inches. Now that all the forms are up, it's time to brace everything. We're going to leave the front of the ramp open so that the guys that are going to backfill the foundation have a way in and out of the forms. Now that the forms are braced, let me show you the difference in the braces. As you can see, the bracing between the joints is different than the bracing at the joints. 
What this bracing allows you to do is to push the forms in easily in case the form starts to push out when the concrete is poured. They will nail the brace to the stick where it's at right now to ensure the form stays straight. But this brace can easily be used to push the forms back in if they start to open. All they have to do is put their foot on the brace like this and hit it down with a sledgehammer and that will push the forms in. Now that the forms are completed, we will mark the top level of the concrete with nails all the way around so that the backfill guys know where the top of the slab is. We put a nail at every corner and about 10 feet spacing all the way around the foundation. We then mark every nail with marking paint so that they are easy to see. When the slabs are taller or they're, uh, they're more out of level, uh, like I said, we use more taller forms and uh, longer bracing. And uh, if they're really tall, we actually use another brace in the middle. So, but anyway, for, for a all purpose foundation, this is, this is a good system. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty efficient. We can, we can knock them out pretty quick and they're uh, pretty strong. So we have close to 700 subscribers, which uh, I absolutely love and uh, I really appreciate it. So that's one of the reasons that it made me want to do this video for you guys so that you guys can get something more out of it than, than um, you know, that what you've been getting. So I figured uh, I'll show you guys how we do uh, the uh, forms in detail. So anyway, if you haven't subscribed, please do so and uh, see you next week. We are Texas Barnominiums.